is Chris here and today we are off to the Lamington National Park in the Gold Coast hinterland. We were supposed to go beach camping on Bribie Island but the weather turned a little bad and we're not doing that now. So uh, we're heading to our rallies. I thought it might be nice to see after the rain and uh, the rainforest retreat up there has a, there's a treetop walk. I think there's a bird feeding which are either rosellas or a kind of like a parrot. Um, where they have bird feeding all day. They have a couple of hikes and stuff up there. So we're going to check out, see what there is to do and everything. And um, yeah, hopefully have a great day. So I hope you enjoy it. The Lamington National Park covers over 200 square kilometers and given World Heritage status in 1994. The area is full of hiking, bush camping and waterfalls. But today we're only driving to O'Reilly's Rainforest Retreat and checking out what's to do around there. O'Reilly's is a central spot for things to do and tours are often run out of here. It's also got luxury mountain accommodation and a spa retreat and some bush camping. I might have to give the accommodation a go one day. Anyway, it takes about two hours to get from Brisbane to O'Reilly's Rainforest Retreat or one and a half hours from the Gold Coast. The reason it takes so long is that you have lots and lots of windy roads, hairpin turns, slow driving, and one car roads to drive on all the way up. We also found the last 10 kilometers full of holes. It's all sealed roads and any standard vehicle can actually get up there, but smaller vehicles will be easy to maneuver with oncoming traffic. In the end, trying to get up there in the early mornings or in less busier times will be easier without the traffic. The more traffic there is, probably the longer it'll take to get up there. Once you get there, there are a few buildings around. The cafe and gift shop where you can get some food, drinks, pick up a souvenir or local arts and craft gifts. This is also where you'll find the toilets. Next is an information centre or find out about everything there is to do there, plus book your tours. We did manage to see a Sedgeway tour practising on the Sedgeways. Might be a nice addition if you don't like walking. Next we have the entrance and check-in counter for the accommodation. It looks like they have some different types of rooms available. From what I can see, the prices seem to range from about 150 to 200 per night if you're interested in giving them a go. If anything, they seem to have a pretty awesome view over the Lamington National Park bushland. And of course, a pool. Our first stop today is what they call the Booyong Walk, very short and mostly has you walking on boardwalk. So I know this is a World Heritage Area, so UNESCO listed, but um, it's just an amazing dense forest through here, so we are about to go on the treetop walk. The treetop walk is a big favourite and clearly signposted from across the reception area and only a few hundred metres to get to the treetop section. This section consists of nine suspension bridges around 16 metres above the ground and even better that it's free to check out. So the treetop walk section is a little wobbly, but it does have some stable points where you can get some balance. There's only six people allowed on here at one time. Marvel at the rainforest biodiversity with subtropical bird life, reptiles, frogs and mammals. If you're game or not afraid of heights, it's about halfway to another lookout point, 30 metres up a giant fig tree. There is two separate platforms though, and due to overgrown plant life, I would say it's only worth it for the first platform and no need to get any higher. The view on the higher one was blocked and you couldn't see much. 
Once you finish on the lookout point, you continue on the rest of the treetop walk. Look out for more giant orchids and ferns, or spot some of the brightly coloured rosella birds, which we'll see more of later. This treetop walk was the first of its kind in Australia and many more introduced around the country after. You can read the profile boards depicting the flora which have been placed along the walkway and assist in you identifying the plants. Well, we finished with the treetop walk proportion. It only took us about, I don't know, 20 minutes, I think, to do it. And most of it was, was actually spent me going up and down the lookout point, which obviously turned out to be not that worth it at the, the top level, only mainly the, the second level. So uh, back on boardwalk now and uh, having a look around at other stuff. Just a little further up from the treetop section, you will find a small botanical garden. A great place to wander around and learn about the different plants in the National Park. I suppose you could spend about 30 minutes to an hour here, but we wanted to check out other hikes that was recommended to us. This track wasn't the easiest to find, but you have to walk on the driveway in front of the accommodation units, past them all and hidden in the trees. Just watch out for the small signpost. So I wanted to go see some waterfalls today, but the, we don't actually have time to do the a longer track. So we're trying this one out. This is the Wishing Well track, and it's apparently only about one kilometer, and you get to walk through a big, large fig tree. So uh, we'll see what it's like, eh? The track passes by some large brush box, which are native evergreen trees. You'll see lots of fallen trees covered in moss, and fungus growing on logs. This was a very dense rainforest walk and the trip to the Wishing Tree Walk was all downhill. Eventually you'll get to a tree fern gully which has a suspension bridge over it. Then after about 25 minutes we actually get to the wishing tree. So there you have it guys, this is the wishing tree. So uh, massive, massive fig tree that you can get up in inside it. Matt's about to get his camera out and get a torch out and see what we can find inside it. From there, you have two choices. Walk back the same way uphill for another 1.2 kilometers or follow the track downstream to return by Red Road, which is another two and a half kilometers. If you're feeling really energetic and have the time, walk the five kilometers to Moran Falls. Due to time, we only walked back the same way, through the smaller fig trees and back to the accommodation. So one of the highlights of O'Reilly's uh, rainforest retreat here is feeding the rosella birds and the king parrot. So Matt's just got a tray of food here and we're going to go feed them. The food you get is at the gift shop where the cafes and the toilets are. The tray and bird seed cost $5 and can be purchased anytime between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. daily. There was also a room key deposit or since we weren't staying there, we had to give them our car keys, but you get that back when you take the tray back. This was about 11.30 a.m. when we tried to feed them, but it took at least 15 minutes for some of the birds to come down. Know that these are wild birds and traveling through the national park and there's nothing really keeping them here.
Expect to see the brightly coloured rosella birds, or the ones with the green wings, akin parrots, or maybe a rainbow lorikeet. We only managed to feed the rosellas today and eventually a few of them did come down. I think with a lot of tourists, the birds do get full and either stay in the trees or fly away further into the national park. We had at least 20 birds just hanging around in the trees, but only less than 10 of them came down. They also didn't share well, and as soon as a new rosella came down, it kind of shoved the other one out of the way. You could feed them out of your hands from the tray supplied, or maybe they would even fly onto your head. I believe there is a Birds of Prey flight show which costs $17 oh. per adult, but this is a nice um. alternative and a little bit more budget friendly. <laughs> well, there's our morning trip to O'Reilly's National Park. So if you want to check out any more day trips from Brisbane, click the video link here. I'll see you next time, guys.